Okay, to solve this part, what I'm going to recommend is to try to get yourself organized as fast as you possibly can. Um, here you have a semicircle and a, and a rectangle. You have two pieces, and do, do it this way. Make this into number two piece. We'll make this into number one piece. We'll come down here. We'll say number one piece equal to the rectangle. First thing to find is to find the area of that rectangle here. Okay, we will draw a quick little view of the rectangle. A rectangle looks something like this. And I would quickly label this. We know this is point one zero zero. We know this is point oh four. We know its centroid is in here. We know the distance from here to here is going to be point oh two. And we know obviously the centroid from here to here is going to be point oh five. Okay, so first thing to do is calculate the area, length times width. That's going to give us an area point zero zero four. We know its y bar from here up is going to be equal to point oh two. We know its x bar from here over will be equal to point oh five. Like that. And at this point I would go ahead and calculate the moment inertia of this thing about its own centroid. So IX, we'll call this the x axis. It's going to equal to 1 twelfth times the base, which is 0 0.100, times the height cubed, 0.04 cubed. When we run that number, we will get 5.33 times 10 to the minus 7th. Now do the same thing for the IY. Oops, hang on a second, what happened here? There we go, sorry about that. We'll go for i, y, and when we do that, we'll get 1 12th times the base now is 0 0.04 times 0 0.100. Zero zero. We will cube that. That gives me 3.33 times 10 to the minus 6. Okay, now we do the same thing for the semicircle. The semicircle, calculate the area of that. That's going to be 1 half times pi times radius squared because you have a, the one half because you have a um, half a circle. When we do that we will get area of number two give me n two point zero zero three nine two six nine. It's y bar if you look this up in calculation in any type of book it'll be four times the radius over three pi. Again, that's the distance from here up. Put a little red dot where its centroid is, somewhere right in here. When we run that value there, we will get its centroid, or y bar, as 0 0.02122. Its x bar, about its, would be from here to here, would also equal to 0 0.05. Okay, I would calculate its moment inertia. It's IX value. Um, I use this one. Your your book or whatever may be a slightly different. 0.1098 times R to the fourth. It guys, gives me a value of 6.86 times 10 to the minus seventh. I about the Y. Uh, that's going to be one eighth pi R to the fourth, and that gives me a value of 2.45 times 10 to the minus six. All right, so get this information down first. This, uh, you're going to make too, it's too easy to make mistakes if you don't. If you if you try to do this all in one big calculation, it's you make a mistake and you're never going to find it. All right, at this point you want to find the centroid. We want to find y bar. To find y bar, we're going to take area times the distance up. So the first one we'll do is 0 0.004. And again, the distance from the bottom of this up to its centroid is going to be 0 0.02. So we'll multiply that by 0 0.020. Now we add the area of the semicircle, which is a 0 0.0039269 times the distance. And I got this, and I'll show you how I got this 0.04. That's 0 0.04 plus 0 0.02122. Again, all I'm doing is this. I'm coming up from here to here to be 0.4, and then I got to go up another 0.0212. So I'm what I'm doing is I'm I'm letting this be my axis right here. 
So I'm letting this be my like my x-axis and I'm letting this be my y-axis. I'm going to find out where the centroids are. All right, so I'm going to do that. I go ahead and do all that right there. And then all you have to do is divide that by the total area, which is 0 0.004 plus 0 0.0039269. When we run those numbers there, we will get a value of 0 0.0404. All right, now we're, we got this located. This is critical information. All right, now to find the moment of inertia, we'll do I, X, X. About the centroid, you must do I, let me do about the C. Uh, you must do I, X, X of each part about its own centroid plus its area times the distance squared. The distance is from this centroid to this centroid squared. That's all we're going to do here. So when I run that value, I will get this. And I would, again, I would break this up individually. I would say, let's do I X X centroid about the uh, rectangle first. So its moment inertia about its own centroid is going to be 5.33 times 10 to the minus 7th plus its area and we said its area is 0 0.004 okay we're going to multiply it by its uh, distance from its centroid square which is going to be we're going to go up 0 0.0404 and then we're going to subtract the 0 0.02 again that gives you the distance between the two centroids and we're going to square that value right there all right and then I'll do the same thing for I X X about the semi circle and we will do this we had 6.86 .6 times 10 to the minus 7th let's go check that real quick we scroll up and that is correct there 6.86 .6 times 10 to the minus 7th plus its area which we said was point um, oh zero zero three nine two six nine times the distance from um, its centroid so this is why I did this I went point oh four up then I went up another point oh two one two and now I subtract point oh four oh four squared all right so now you could run those two values I did that and then when I added them together I got four point five nine times 10 to the minus 6 meters to the fourth and that is the I X about the centroid and let's just check the answer make sure that was correct yeah 4.86 really really close okay now to do I Y I Y here is really really easy and the reason it's easy about the centroid is is everything is about this axis here and the, and the y bar this y axis runs right through this with this right through this point and this point so you don't have to use area times distance squared so all you have to do is take basically all you have to do is take this value here and add it to this value here again it's only because there's no difference between the two centroids so if you add those two values together um, I'll do that real quickly. You get 3.33 times 10 to the minus 6. Minus 6. We will add it to the other one. And that was 2.45 times 10 to the minus 6. Okay, if you add those together, I think you'll see very quickly we're going to get that value right there, which is 5.7888. And let's see if we can do that in my head. That's 5.78 times 10 to the minus 6. Okay, so that's I, Y, C. And now to get your polar moment inertia, or I, Z, or which is equal to J, you just add these two values here together and when you add those two values together you will get exactly what the answer is right here 10.374 times 10 to the minus 6 
within rounding anyway. All right. Again, these are all meters to the fourth and meters to the fourth. All right. There's how you do that one. Um, hopefully this helped. Again, just be you got to be precise about this. You that's why I'm going to recommend that you break it up like this. Find the area and do everything here for this particular for this uh, section and do everything for the other one and then work your way down. Don't try to combine everything in some really, really long equation. Okay?